I, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I promise not to put you to sleep. I, uh, I'm very, uh, very honored to be here. Reverend Father, distinguished guests, friends and family, I'm honored to be here tonight and I want to thank you for your confidence in me to lead this great organization for the upcoming year. And for the seeds that were planted over 50 years ago will continue to bear fruit and that the Federation will continue to prosper and grow. I am now the 50th president of this honored organization and I will do my best to honor the 49 great men and women who preceded me in service to our Federation and to our Ramola family in the United States and in our beloved hometown of Ramola. My uncle, Bullis Rooka, was one of the first presidents, and in his memory, I dedicate myself to this journey as we venture forth into this upcoming year. We are faced with numerous challenges, like the challenge of preserving our culture, the challenge of preserving our heritage, and the challenge of ensuring and securing the future of our Federation. It is the duty of every generation to build upon the accomplishments of their fathers and in turn pass on their accomplishments to the next generation. One of my primary objectives is to strengthen the local clubs and to revitalize the dormant clubs. The local clubs are the backbone and the foundation of our federation. And without their support, our federation is weakened. I think that every community should have a clubhouse, a venue for meetings, socials, houseless, picnics, children's club, teen clubs, other activities that our youth can embrace and in time develop into our future leaders. I would like to establish a club development committee made up of past presidents and other leaders of our federation to join me in my travels to the local clubs. This committee can hopefully advise, assist, and energize our Ramola communities and to, and to ensure their success. Earlier this year, I had the great pleasure of visiting our hometown of Ramola. It was my third trip there, and the city has grown so much in the last 11 years there were so many new buildings everywhere. There were new neighborhoods, new restaurants, and so much vibrancy in the streets. We had a wonderful time, and I encourage everyone to go to Ramallah, to take your children, to take your grandchildren. Let them experience the sights and sounds of our beloved city. I must also salute the Palestinian people for their fortitude and dealing with the daily humiliation of that stifling occupation. I also want to send a message to the Israeli government that no matter how much you detain us, you question us or harass us, we're going to keep coming back again and again to our homeland. There's more and more of us. You may have broken our hearts, but you will never break our spirit. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Cleveland community for hosting such a great convention and to thank Charlie Shamia for mentoring me this past year and to thank the executive committee and the board of directors for all their hard work and dedication. I want to thank my beautiful wife, Joy, for her love, understanding, and support throughout this past year and into the upcoming year. I would also like to thank all of my friends and my family who are here to support me and to share with me this very special day in my life. I look forward to the challenge of this upcoming year, and I hope I'm worthy of this challenge. And as a student of history, I remember reading that during World War II, people would hold up their hands in the sign of a V. The V was for victory. But the V symbol also has another meaning to me. The V stands for vision. The vision of a Palestinian state and V for the 
victory in our struggle to achieve it. Long live the Federation, long live Ramallah, long live Palestine. Thank you. Hey, Johnny, come back here for so we complete our uh, tradition. <laughs> this is our tradition. This flag has the name of the past president. And what we do, you know, what we do is basically pass it from one president to another with the names on it. So that's the flag of Palestine. I've had it all last year. And finally, I want to thank everybody for their cooperation and patience. And I would like to direct your attention to the stage where Mr. Jacob Cash will offer a few closing words. Thank you. Good evening. This will be the final speech of the evening. It'll be very short, but it's a very important subject. Uh, a face without a place. Is that who we really are? Here's our country. There's this wall, and it doesn't bode well with me. Nor should it with you. Standing here on the eve of Independence Day gives me hope for Palestine. Knowing that tyranny can be overthrown by a people that fight for three freedom gives me a hope for Palestine. We as American Palestinians should rejoice on this day. This day should give us hope for Palestine. Freedom is a right that should never be taken away. Contrary to the beliefs of our oppressors, we're not going away. They have tried to take our freedom and are trying to wipe out our entire identity, but we are here to stay. You may take the name Palestine from the land of our forefathers, but you'll never remove it from our veins. My blood, your blood, our children's blood, and their children's blood will always be Palestinian. Bring your attention to the stage here stands the wall, 25 feet high. It's 403 miles long. It's placed to intimidate us. <laughs> 